All right, welcome everyone out there. And we are actually in person in Rochester Hills, which is so wonderful. I think it's been a year since we've been together. So it just feels so good to have human connection <laughs> and have some family here. So thank you for those of you who traveled so far to be here. Uh, and if you're out there, welcome as well. We're gonna be here for a couple of hours, just sharing some channel downloads and messages and energies. And I've been feeling it building all day. So I think this is gonna be a really, really good session. Um, if you're new here or out there, we're with the Flower of Life Institute, and we are focused on raising human consciousness. We have many, many projects going on. Uh, we have a kids movement. We have um, a mentorship program that we're working on. Oh my gosh, so many other things. And you guys all know out there, you follow our stuff. We've got a magazine. Check that out. But um, my work is really blossoming. I want to share a couple of new things uh, that are going on with me. We were actually just talking in the room about Inner Circle 19. So um, that started three weeks ago, I think. We've got about three more live transmissions to go before the live Q&A, so you're not too late. If you want to join in, it is entitled Prosperity. And um, I love this course, really. They are bringing in some ancient wisdom. It feels really Egyptian to me. I don't know if yeah, you know, yeah, it feels really Egyptian. We've been working with uh, Akhenaten and Nefertiti. I had Maat come in last time, which was a huge surprise for me. And they're teaching us all about um, what they learned when they were here and how to maintain this vibrational state that is not just about money. <laughs> That's, the course is not about money. It's, it's just about living in a more prosperous vibration. And... Um, what I'm learning personally from the course is that the goal is to really keep this kind of steady state of excitement for life, which I think is so foreign on the planet today. There's just so many of us who have gone through these periods where we got to get up in the morning, uh, you know, at a certain time and show up for the job and all these responsibilities that we don't look forward to. And one of the really beautiful messages that they're bringing in is to find excitement in very mundane and simplistic things you know like your everyday grooming is you know this sacred kind of journey with smells and sights and you know candles and creating your sanctuary in your home so that everything just feels really lovely i think and that is something we can all do especially right now with the energies the way that they are so check that out if it's on my website if you're interested um and so before we do the live channeling, and I feel like we're going to do a lot of live channeling today, I always like to catch everybody up on some of the themes and messages. And, and since you guys are here in the room, uh, and even out there, if there are any questions or things you want me to personally address, feel free. We're just pretending that we're sitting in my living room here, and we're just having a, a, a chat, a tea chat. But if you're in the room, raise your hand, and Ethan will pass the mic so that everyone out there can hear the question. And we'll do the same with the guides when we do the live channeling, uh, when the guides come in. If you have a question, just raise your hand. We'll send you the mic. And if you're out there, you can load up the chat. Just denote if it's for me or for the guides. And we're going to work with a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot today. So I, I, would, I have a couple of themes that I want to bring in that have been really interesting to me as I've been editing the book and, you know, channeling for others. And... Um, it involves going quantum. And when we hear that word, it's, it's such an abstract kind of thing. You know, we always think quantum, like, oh, quantum healing, and, you know, we need to go quantum, and it's really um, difficult, and there are all these steps and things we have to achieve in order to go quantum. Well, the two chapters I put out on Friday uh, in Epitium, which is uh, the manuscript, my first manuscript of my book, um, really talked about two concepts that drive home this understanding of what quantum is and how we're already quantum, which is a really big deal. So I'm going to go backwards and then start, you know, move forward from the, the chapters that were posted and start with time. All of us, I think, who are here kind of know that we're living in linear time, but time isn't really linear. And we have all these crazy things going on right now that some people are coining the Mandela effect, right, which is a big shift in how we interpret history. 
And the guides even alluded to the fact that some of us are struggling with short-term and long-term memory. How many? Yeah, big time. I mean, things just, like, it's hard to remember the things that happened in the past, but even the same way that other people remember what happened in the past, and even the physicality around that is starting to shift. So the basic idea is this. We have shifted in speed. So we are at a higher speed of vibration than we were when those memories occurred. So we were all pretty much here in the third dimension. We still are. We still have a lot of third dimensional things going on. There's nothing wrong with that. But the the third dimension existed in a slower speed of vibration. So everything that we created, our bodies, our homes, anything in our life, all material, exists in that slower speed which is really hard for us as humans to conceptualize. But we can start to notice little things that we're changing as an example of this. And I'll take our bodies, for example. I'm sure so many of you here and out there have gone on this journey of improving your health, right? Detoxification, understanding the chemical counts in foods and fluoride and water and all of this stuff. That's how material in the third dimension moves into a higher speed of vibration. It's not because we magically shift into a higher dimension and we did all this spiritual work and now we're cleansed and purified and, you know, we're light. We already are that light. But every decision we make is shifting our reality and our vibration and everything goes along with it. So we've made all these little incremental changes and we've taken all these steps. Some of us have gone raw or vegan or organic or whatever, you know, doing all of this supplementation. That is how we are becoming more quantum. It is through these little changes, these realizations and shifts in our life, physical shifts, they have to be physical. Like they're physical shifts. We're moving material, our bodies, from the third dimension into the fifth. And that isn't always easy. Sometimes as we're doing that, things come up. You know, energy comes up. We will um, unravel (laughs) a disease or um, some emotional thing deep within us, you know, a, a cellular memory, something that we've been suppressing. And it's tough because we think, well, we must not be progressing if this stuff is going on, but, but it's necessary. I think when we move vibrationally, we're going to naturally have to deal with things that have been suppressed or created in a different vibration that are going to come to light and need to pass on and purge. And so we have to be really neutral with that stuff when it happens. We have to be the witness of it, the observer of it. So the other part of this, which I find very empowering and also interesting, is decision-making. Guys, we're talking a lot about um, how our decision-making process is a quantum process. It's what makes us quantum. It's what allows us to affect not only everything in our lives and what we see in the world, but beyond. And we're talking future generations. We're talking past because it's all wound around us right here. So we exist in the spiral of time. We're intersecting with history, things that have happened in other star systems, cosmic family lineages, things that have happened here. And all we see is the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And we have all these things, these areas of our lives that we need to make some pretty radical decisions about that are hard. And the guides are saying the worst possible thing that we could do is either not decide So choose to not make a decision or to make a decision that keeps other people comfortable and what we think is safe. So hang with me and I'll explain why that is. If you you were with me for 18, Inner Circle 18, we um, channeled this entire transmission download about life force and how we are ambassadors of life force to the earth. Life force is universal energy, and we connect to that, and it flows through us, and and it 
It exists in everything we are, in everything we do, in every decision we make. So we are unique templates, unique beings that are projecting light, light and life force through us, through preference. The guides even alluded to the fact that it is not only our birthright to prefer, it is our responsibility ability to live in our preference. It is how we serve. So we can clear away all this crazy stuff that, you know, I know there's so many of you out there and you in here who are healers and meant to work on the grids and meant to clear entities and, and all of this stuff. And that is so important. But every single day, every decision we make, no matter how big or how small, is running life force in a certain direction to create something in our collective hologram. That is how significant we are. So if we do not do those decisions justice, if we are not aligned with our truth when we make them, we are not serving. So many have come to my transmissions and have asked questions about what's happening in the world and keeping people comfortable and safe, and we're empaths. We feel the amount of fear, and we want to shift that for people. But if we take it on ourselves for them, we're not doing our service justice, which is the whole reason that we're here. Because we do not have the ability to change anyone else's reality. We don't have the ability to shift their perception, how they feel, what decisions they're going to make. But what we have to know is that ours are fusing together in this really cool matrix to uphold a certain reality. And it's reliant upon so many unique decisions that if we were all going the same way, it would totally fall apart. So in the midst of this, I'm also transmitting in session. You know, I have a lot of people coming to me now with extremely challenging circumstances that they're dealing with at work, right, with family members, with a variety of different things. And what the guys have been sharing is this kind of intellect that comes from within us that all of us have the ability to tap into but it doesn't come from interpreting the current landscape, which is a really hard concept to get into because we think we have to look out here and evaluate the pros and the cons and project into the future about what might happen and what might not happen. And as we do that, we're actually creating. So we have to be really careful when we are projecting and we're doing all of that. If we do it in the right frequency, we can contemplate all day long. We can say, well, this might happen and that might happen, but the goal is really to get more expansive than that. When we are practicing anything, which I know you guys are all practicing stuff in here and out there, the goal is, is to find our center where that intelligence exists, where we get to choose beyond what anyone else thinks, beyond what the world is mirroring to us because there's a lot of distortion out there right now. And, and that's been one of the biggest message that, messages, I should say, that's been coming into my session work is a lot of the things that we're paying attention to are just distorting our reality and taking us away from our intellect and our intuit, which we've worked so hard, haven't we, in this spiritual movement and community to trust in what we know and what we receive from all of these beautiful guides and beings who are actually extensions of ourselves, that why would we go back to following everything out there? Which is, again, it's kind of like an up-leveling for us to really trust and have faith in that, that we're going to make the decision from a place where we are spiritually embodied and we have the free license to arrive at a perception and a decision from in here, but more than that, we have to remember that everyone else can do the same. And if we don't allow that in the world, we are going to hamper free will. Because free will is reliant 
upon the free will of every other being. And, and so we're not talking, you know, they remind me here, we're, we're not talking about harmful acts, right? We're not talking about physically and emotionally harmful things. That has its own separate category. <laughs> we're talking about allowing everyone to follow their desires and their preferences, even when it doesn't resonate with our own. When that happens, even when we think we know better, the universe is going to step in and orchestrate exactly what is necessary. So if we take this idea of being quantum a bit further, and let's take the example of soul contracts, because this is the one that was brought up in the book. We see decisions so linear, and we think it's black or white. We're going to take this path, and it's going to hurt somebody, and it's going to be wrong, or we're going to take this path, and, and it will play it safe, and everyone will be okay. But in the astral, in the ethers, there are things coming that we know nothing about. Sometimes we're stalling to leave space for a partner to have something happen that allows them to take a different path, right? We, we're like ambassadors of change when we follow our gut to this degree. We don't know that space for something we can't see, or others are doing that as well. We awaken through very unknown and mysterious circumstances. So if we take that away from people because we don't follow our heart, we never know what path that they wouldn't have taken, right? I, I don't know if you're, if you're feel, you know, feeling me on this, but it's kind of like when we're evaluating the pros and cons on the earth, we're missing out on this incredible volume of knowledge that we can't see. But the way that we see it is here. It's right here. It exists within us. It exists within our gut. It exists within our personality. It exists within our minds. Because everything that we've become to this point, to this day, is meaning. We are meaning. We have placed meaning on matter through time, and we have become a unique personality that is here to create more meaning. Like we're here to self-know, and everyone else is here to self-know. But human connection is the most valuable resource when it comes to that, because we won't know ourselves unless we interact with others. And we have the opportunity to choose something that is different that we never would have thought of before. Ultimately, what I think is this is a good sign that we have all this polarity in the world. And I, you know, I was listening back, the reason I say this is I was listening back to my May event um, last May. And the guide said at the end, it was the Pleiadians actually, they said, uh, when we see timeline splits to this degree and this most, much polarity in the world, it's actually a good sign because we know that energy is trying to rebalance and contemplate. And the second humans take the path that they are meant to be on, it's all going to fold on to itself. And that's going to take a little while, right? But the only way we get there is through every decision. Every, every footstep on the earth, every direction we run energy and that we channel life for us is the contributing factor to all of this moving along because it's guaranteed that it will i mean that's all we're guaranteed is change right so for those of us who are having a really hard time you know suffering with the things that are happening today on the planet we have to remember that we're quantum we're already quantum and if we follow our hearts and we stand in our truth everything is going to change and and it's inevitable that regardless of where you stand that's going to happen anyway, because all of us are here influencing this collective hologram and moving it along. Any questions coming up? Things to discuss? Okay, so let's go ahead and channel them. Um, I'm going to bring in, I don't know who, we'll see. We're going to bring in the best guides, teachers, masters who are here to address everyone in the room. We'll bring in a general message for all of you out there too, and then we'll take questions um, sometimes we get processes and activations. We we'll always hear how we need to breathe and relax and all of that. Um, I was working a little bit with Mary Magdalene before I got here today, so perhaps we will hear from her. 
And if you haven't been here before, uh, I'm a trans channel. So I'm going to drive my attention and my mind and my consciousness somewhere over there and uh, become a vehicle for all of these beautiful beings of light and collectives. We'll keep up with them as they come in and out. We are going to work with Mary Magdalene today. It is through the grace and the honor of our presence that we offer this transmission for we are not one but many. As I am offering this guidance, it is purposeful within you because it is something you already know. It is bringing to the surface an alchemical part of who you are that has been neglected for a very long period of time. It is certainly sovereign and it is free, but it is something even more beautiful and purposeful than that. You are the elemental construct of all creation. Through time, we have witnessed the incredible manifestation of the human collective in many forms, in many lights. You are now walking within the fragments of masters. When you embodied, you carried them back to the earth. And it was through your willingness and the contractual agreements that you made to step onto the earth plane at a time very similar to many others throughout history. The history that you are replaying may not come as a very easy experience, yet it is one that many of us rose above and were able to find the perfect orientation to our creative vehicle through. Because sometimes we are being suppressed to a certain degree that we are being allowed to rise up again in the resurrection and the light of our own authority. It is not an authority similar to what you have experienced on the planet in the past. It is an authority that is active in unity consciousness. It is a, an authority that is active in love. It is a part of you that cherishes all life, but knows that your life is the ambassador of that energy. So everything that you have come to cherish, everything within you that is honored and respected is having an incredible influence upon everything else. In fact, the majesty of the energy that you are is far beyond your knowing. It is through meditation that we often travel beyond the bodies that we are so used to criticizing, and for a moment, experience the bliss of oneness. But these events are typically fleeting, and what your soul remembers is that bliss is your essence. Everything that you are in physical merges with light upon your intention and your driving prayer, meaning what you are focused on, the affirmation and prayer that you offer becomes a valuable channel within you to bring source energy to the earth and share it with others. But if we cannot hold that feeling of bliss, because we find ourselves in an earthly situation that is dense and not to our liking, we will never realize the creator that we are. We will never realize the master that we are. When we come to speak with you, it is not because we are channeling through one being. It is because you are all upholding a field through your belief and through your consciousness that allows us to step forward. It could never be through the responsibility of one that these energies are ushered in. Often it is not seen in this light that these events are taking place co-cooperatively, but you come 
as a diamond crystal ambassador of every being that will step through in this transmission because you are one with them, because there could be no difference between who you are now and who you will continue to be and who you have been through time. It is just that you do not see the perfection that we do in this moment. And as we are sharing this with you, like a cosmic mirror reflecting back your brilliance, you are now imbued with the remembrance of it to take back to your life and cultivate it in ways you have forgotten. Because creation is not a physical thing. When you are inspired to create in physical, it is coming through the connection, the contracts, the agreements of many. And this is why physical creation on the earth plane has been somewhat lowered in its ability to fulfill, uh, to joy, uh, joyfully fulfill those who are creating. What we desire for you is more of the flow and connection of what we speak. Who we are uh, has been focused on creation in a different way than you are today, but that is of no consequence. Because what physical truly needs from you right now is to stand within the power of your creative energy, to feel it for yourselves before you put it into solid action. Even if it means you must stall, even if it means you must contemplate, even if it means that you sit in meditation for days on end, align yourself perfectly. Because in these moments, what you feel becomes known as word, it becomes known as law, it becomes known as process, and it becomes known as decision. There is nothing that you have learned to this moment in the physical world that can prepare you for the level of creation we speak of. It is otherworldly, yet it is within you to uncover when you hear the sound of your own creator self, the energy that is imbued within you, speaking loudly through discomfort and joy, the paths to take. This inner meridian complex and technology is a GPS, and it is not difficult to ascertain. It comes through the breath, it is allowed through the pause. It is opened within your heart and it is shared with others as you walk softly and lovingly upon the earth. We're very pleased to take questions that you may have. Can the guides tell us more about sacred geometry, that which we in this community are ready to illuminate to help us in this ascension? We are Noah. We are a collective of many disciples and ascended masters who consider ourselves Christ consciousness. And we want to bring the idea of sacred geometry to you in a way that perhaps you haven't heard before. While it can be extremely mathematical and translated through quantum physics, geometry is the rhythm of nature. It is seen in all things. And you are an extension of that. You are an extension of all things that are upon and within the earth and beyond. What we see as we observe the heavens and the cosmos is a sacred geometry of source that is channeling energy and resource between all beings that exist and span all space and time. And as we speak of this, we also recognize that each planet and star system has developed often their own, their own flow of energy, their own geometry, and their own structure and system that can be either very harmonious or somewhat imbalanced. It is important that each planet and race have and maintain a level of energetic coherence and ex extension and expansion 
for the benefit of ascension. But this is also where things can become very vulnerable. Because there are many elder beings and ancient ones throughout time who understand the ease of working with geometry. They understand the influence of ancient symbology and they understand how it operates within your bodily structure. So if a very malevolent group of beings wishes to capitalize upon the energy of another, they can very easily structure some type of geometric uh, technology that siphons currency. And ultimately, this is what we have seen happen on the Earth plane. Now, it isn't happening so deliberate as a holographic physical technology. It is truly happening within your own DNA. It is the geometry of your own spirit and physical bodies that need to be realigned. So everything that you are in this moment and everything that you are doing is contributing to either the balance or imbalance and flow of this energy. This is how critical you are to sacred geometric alignment and balance. And it comes not from one thing. We are very pleased and, and especially hopeful to see so many advanced healing technologies and modalities appearing on the surface of the earth. We are also very excited that many of you are practicing and recovering ancient modalities of, of breath. All of these things are making an incredible difference. And how the geometries within and upon Earth, within and upon the surface of humanity, reconnect and rebalance. But to simplify this, we suggest finding balance each day, which we know is somewhat a very foreign concept and can be taken in a very complicated way because it may seem to take a great deal of effort in order to find balance. But we are speaking of very simplistic things that help you to feel grounded and help you to reclaim your energy because truly, what we see happening on the plane of the earth is that humans are reclaiming their energy. This may be translated as reclaiming sovereignty. And these things go hand in hand as we define them. But to become centered may be a momentary practice of breath. It may be some activity that is scheduled within your day on a regular basis. We encourage you to evaluate your daily experience for these opportunities to reclaim that balance, even if it is stepping away from some responsibility that you are paying great attention to, to come back into yourself. So we think it is inevitable that the grids, which are the geometries of the earth and the universe, will come back into coherence and reconnect very prosperously for humanity. But you are all contributing to that individually as you continue your journey. Is Kundalini Yoga a good practice to raise consciousness? I know there's been much controversy with the person who brought it to the West. We are the Lemurians. And, and we are pleased you brought this question to the attention of many because we see kundalini yoga as a cosmic practice that has come to the earth through many hybrids. In fact, in our civilization, it was taught to us by those who came from other star systems to our civilization. But certainly not unlike many other things that have been taught to humanity through time, there has been some manipulation and retranslation of these teachings. We may bring, for example, the Bible into your uh, perception. Uh, the biblical teachings that, that many share today are translations that are not complete, and some may have alter ulterior motives for sharing them. There is a certain um, statement we want to make about what you are referring to, especially evolve, involving the teacher or the foundation of this practice. 
Some have come with a very pure intention to share something that is powerful and healing for humanity, but have been manipulated through the idea of competition, self-service, or through some focus of frequency modification to change it through them as a tool of separation. And if we want to look at the original tones, for example, and sounds that are used through this practice, we go back to the cosmos again, because in the birth of Sophia, these original sounds and tones were heard in the alchemical breath of the consciousness of this being. But it is through intention that they are sometimes skewed. Think of a tone as a spiritual modality, somewhat like Om, being a very cosmic and intensified energetic channel, opening to create some profound experience in the body or in the world. This may have been seen by beings, observed by beings, that in a similar way to the previous question, wanted to infiltrate and capitalize on that energy. So what we see is that there is a great deal of manipulation going on through certain teachers. They will often focus the practice in a very individualized way and take humans into a state of physical feeling as opposed to astral and etheric expansion. And this is where many of the um, practices that we've seen, even beyond the one you are asking us about, have gone awry. Uh, Tantra is another one, for example, where some of these ancient teachings, which are clearly beneficial for the human collective, as well as the entire planet, have been relegated to something that is in a lower astral plane, or even the lower chakras. So our goal is this, it is to see enlightened teachers bringing these practices back in a way that reinstalls them uh, in purity, uh, without some focus of self, competition, hierarchy, or separation. And this can be seen very readily and easily in your teachers today. Use your intellect and your intuit and choose wisely as to the ones that you follow. For if they are in more of an egoic um, uh, alignment, uh, naturally you will find that they are not holding the space properly for those who are receiving the teachings. And in doing so, inviting in perhaps an interpretation of the process that is not beneficial either. We believe that where you're going uh, will command that many of these practices be uh, reoriented, meaning uh, when you move into a higher dimension or you're existing in a higher vibrational plane, things will come to light. There will be a great deal of transparency and those who have been, been manipulating for a great deal of time uh, will also be just as transparent. It does not mean that the entire practice should be thrown away but perhaps that it should be more deeply explored uh, to bring back its origins. There is trepidation among many scientists in exploring topics that seem intangible and immeasurable like consciousness and spirituality, and yet they must be included in order to have a more complete understanding of all that is. How will we be able to make this leap as a society from our current paradigm to one that includes an understanding of consciousness? I love the spirit of scientific inquiry, but the field itself seems to have stagnated. We are the Council of Light, and we already see this happening on the surface of the earth. The issue that you are having is that there is still a variance in consciousness that is not allowing it to hold and expand to the degree that you desire. Ultimately, the study of quantum physics and consciousness has been building in the collective for quite some time. But we don't believe that science as you know it today will take a 
back seat to this way of thinking because you are ultimately here uh, to be physical beings and in every structure and societal area of consciousness you are going to find emerging and that means taking what was before which in some cases is valid and using it as a tool with these spiritual and more quantum topics when we speak of science we are not speaking of often the measurements that you are looking at on the earth plane because there was a time and place for this where measuring physical quantities and qualities and uh, prescribing certain routines around research was appropriate what we're truly speaking of is the understanding of how everything is connected this is ultimately what we believe you are speaking of which is the foundational approach upon which everything else will arrive because until the scientists on earth come to the realization that everything is ultimately affecting everything else and connected beyond physical presence you will not arrive in the future that you are speaking of but we are hopeful and we do believe it is inevitable and here is why in many respects where you are headed is not only a reflection of your consciousness but how your consciousness merges with what has happened before and what is happening now in the future this is very difficult for a human mind to conceptualize that you're actually merging this moment with knowledge from the past that will be applied in the future and taken into this timeline in a very unique way but it is true that we see the efficiency and the speed of your access to this knowledge increasing twofold meaning that even though what's happening on the surface of the earth may seem um disillusioning may seem as if it brings discontent it is not the full picture of how everything is playing out <clears throat> as a council of light uh, we are privy to holographic models uh, this is quite different than the way your scientists would measure the potential of some future experience uh, what we are doing is we are calculating vibration and we are looking at everything that exists now and how it is implicated by everything that was before and taking it out into the future in a way that it is inevitable and this is why we can be so hopeful because it is through these holographic models that we see where you are headed and it is good it is a fifth dimensional potential that we believe is coming that will replace all things on the surface of the earth but keep in mind that you are still operating in a linear time space and material the physical plane of everything that you interact in and with vibrates slower than the consciousness you have ascertained what you are witnessing now is the disintegration of what cannot come with you into this future reality and that is just as important as amplifying what it is you do desire because unless space is made and unless these things are able to find their resolve you will still be um, focusing uh, into some old third dimensional models and we're not saying that they will rid themselves completely this is a progression that you are on over the next several years moving towards a new reality that many of you already feel and see can the guides explain what the black sun really is we are the Pleiadians. There are many interpretations of, of a black sun, and certainly through time, planets and star systems have been in proximity to different suns because they have ascended and transitioned and moved throughout the grids into different locations. In many of the ancient stories that are told of these suns, take place during very elongated eclipse periods that are unnatural to the earth for example our system our star system our um, collective has 
gone through so many transitions similar to yourselves, but we are very elder. We have been here for a very long time. And what we have noticed is that sometimes there is a radiant disruption in the universe. And this has happened as an anomaly within our star system, as well as in many other or on many other planets. Uh, radiant energy disruptions can happen when multiple suns collide or a planet is moving between various locations where multiple suns have impact on the race upon it. And it is often um, a disturbance of polarity that is taking place as well. The black sun that many are um, speaking of today uh, is not one but many. It is simply the occurrence of astrological events playing out in different timelines and star systems that have been shared as history. And certainly this can happen on the Earth again. We even go back to the beginning of Earth and your seeding um, because at this time there were many days of darkness. And in those days, the radiant energy of the sun shifted polarities, and many may have interpreted that the sun was black. But this was a merging of their energies as one, blocking the um, beneficial rays that many know as light. This had a profound effect on your DNA that you are still um, healing, we'll say, or um, attempting to unravel today. Do the guides have any advice on how to program crystals and water and how long does it last? Well, we are the elementals and we would like to speak to this directly. And there are several points we want to make about this because it is possible, of course, to imbue anything with vibration through your intention and through your focus. But crystals and water have very similar properties that are extremely powerful. As the previous question about geometry um, stated, this is a flow of energy. Within any construct, within a body, within a crystal, within water, if looked at under a microscope, uh, would be geometries. And these geometries are affecting not only every other aspect of the body, but everything outside of it as well. Crystals through time have become very focused on the assignment of holding the alchemical connection to Gaia's core. So when you are seeing a crystal, when you're working with a crystal, you are actually holding a configuration of Gaia's own energy that has come through in a very unique consciousness. And because of this, crystals all hold very specific assignments today. They have certain properties that can be very beneficial. Some of them are offering energy and others are clearing it. But beyond that, if you are working with the consciousness of a crystal, you may program it in concert with its assignment. So what we are saying is that to truly program a crystal, you must understand that the crystal has a certain component built in it already. And what you are attempting to do is not override that program, but find some complementary or matching intention. And there are many on the planet today who have the ability to understand this, to speak directly to the crystalline collectives, and to understand what it is they desire and how they may serve humanity. If we go back to ancient times, for example, Atlantis, these crystals were seen as beings. They were not only uh, technologically advanced members of the society, but they were revered and looked at as masters. Those who programmed them were working in concert with them. Water is a bit more fluid. You see, water is malleable. Uh, it is a, a sustaining vibration that is cosmic. It comes from within Gaia Sophia, but it manifests within you. And it is for great purpose that you are able to interact with it, to program it, and to hold the programming of water. 
But ultimately what water requires is purity. And we know some of you are here to purify water through the work that you are doing. We always advise this as the first step to hold the programming. And this is why. Much like crystals, water has been um, taken from its original form. Um, it has been changed or modified. It's been um, subject to impurities, uh, chemical counts, for example, that has unstructured its beauty and coherence. So to truly hold any programming within water, whether it be your own programming, imbuing yourself with love or a vessel of water, uh, stating its um, complete transition into a purified state is a very important component of that process. Now the length through which any programming will remain is a very difficult question to answer, and this is why. Every human who is working with an element or a water for healing, for example, is a different being with a different structure, with a different intention, and with a different divine plan or purpose. And who they are offering the technology to is also a very unique and diverse being. Often what we see is when a crystal is programmed or water is programmed, it is offered to someone as a healing vehicle. And it is through their belief and intention that the programming is maintained. Because as a healer, um, as an activator, as a cosmic soul, you cannot hold space for others for eternity. If this was the case, there would be no free will. <laughs> there would be no reason to be a creator. So keep in mind that teaching is often a valuable tool when we are using these modalities. We can channel uh, prayers, for example, and intentions to hold the programming that the ambassador of the crystal or the water is responsible for stating, or we can evaluate the length of time needed for the program to remain in place. All of this is, is up for interpretation uh, and may be widely approached by many. Hello everyone, I'm new here, so uh, being a grounded person, you feel a lot of responsibilities and have uh, trouble looking into the future and responsibilities of, you know, uh, marriage and kids. And then how do you make that transition of being, uh, you know, afraid of the future and fear of money and uh, materialistic things and then how do you transition that into manifesting it so that you won't have that many clashes with the sinner in the other or something so that's my question as to how do you transition that well we're the pleiadians and where many of you stand today the transition may seem great and this is what we hear and feel from you is that there are so many things going on in your life that it seems overwhelming to move from point A to point C. And this is where the vibration of what you are anticipating in the future needs to be considered. Sometimes we might say it is prudent to keep yourself more in a present moment focus if this is the occasion of your life. Because in the present, while you may feel a lack of responsibility for caring, for the safety of others and yourself in the future, you're allowing a higher power to step in and support and guide you. And this is what is most forgotten, is that you do come to earth with an entire, not only suite of energy that accompanies you perfectly, but many guides and beings and angels that are purporting to send signals to you on the earth to direct you to the timeline that is most prosperous and fulfilling. But when we are so encumbered by responsibility and fear of what may happen in the future, we are not in the right vibration to hear or see or receive all of this support. So our advice is this, when there is fear, anything that is drawing your attention in the outer world that is causing fear. It, it is only a message 
coming from your internal wiring of a change that is already possible. What we fear is often a path that we are not meant to take. And this is why we fear it. Because to us, to our inner self, to our higher self, to our soul, it seems so uncomfortable that we know it could never be on our path. But the problem is we see no other path to go. So we stay in fear because we believe it is the potential that we are meant to experience. And very slight shifts in, in the amount of possibility that you are able to anticipate can make great strides in these circumstances. Meaning, sometimes we have to question exactly what we believe the future will hold. And this is where consciousness is a, an incredible tool because when you are becoming more conscious, you are expanding your viewpoint of the world to see that it could never be one way. And as we are standing here today, looking at the energy fields of all of you, it would be impossible for us to count the number of potentials that you have already created that are beneficial and co-creating and moving you in directions of resource and abundance but it is just that you do not perceive them. It is through universal law that a matching frequency or feeling of these possibilities helps to ground them. And sometimes this is a very difficult place to maintain because everything that we are doing feels so hard. But this is also where we need to simplify. We need to get into the present moment details of every task with such zero point precision that we are no longer negating the fact that we are creating our reality. Because if we do this, we'll find that our work becomes much easier. You see, many of you are focused into tax, tasks that you do not want. And what we see is that in the discomfort or the dissatisfaction of doing them, your mind is always projecting you outside. Even if the task is no longer resonant with you, if you come to the foundation of it being in your life through the acceptance and the, we'll say, um, surrender that it is there, incredible and miraculous changes can happen. Because resistance is what is catapulting you out of a great connection to source that is your birthright. When you do not want to be somewhere, and you are projecting your mind outside, you are not in the present moment. And this is where inspiration is found. This is where decisions are made. This is where the authority of your higher self is heard. So our goal for you and our suggestion as well is very contradictory to what you might think. And it is to become as immersed in everything that is your life now with great reverence and great attention and appreciation for it, because it is the landing place of what will come next. And if you can stay there without having to complicate it by what may happen in the future, you will find the future will arrive in, in perfect order and that everything will take care of itself exactly as you intended before you arrived here, because there is a divine plan. And your divine plan, all of you, is good. It could never be something that is wrong or causes you to suffer. It is just that you're experiencing it in such a level of density. And sometimes it's ready to shift, but you stay there too long. So take one day, one step, and one frequency at a time. Bring yourself back into the body and allow yourself to be where you are without the complication of what will be and get into the feeling of the support that you already have so that it may bring you more of what is inevitable. Seems that there's a lot of um, beings coming to earth right now. Um, and I'm finding that most of them are coming to parents that are very indoctrinated into the system, meaning they're, they're vaccinated, they're following all of the, the rules is this on purpose? Are these children coming to help us along the way? We're the Pleiadians. And we do see this as well. It, it is not always the case. However, 
keep in mind the amount of children that are coming in are dependent upon those that are choosing to have them, it is one and the same. Those parents that are making certain choices are helping those who may have never been on earth before to truly understand what it is that they have come to heal. It is difficult we know when this is seen, when it's observed, because we believe that it will be to the detriment of that child's future. But think back to your own awakenings. There was something that may have gone awry, either within you, within your body, within your emotions, within your family, that led your attention to an improvement. The foundation of every divine plan, of every being that comes to the planet, is to improve on conditions now. And sometimes those have to be in conflict with the divine plan of a cosmic child because they need to understand the story of it in some very profound way. It's somewhat like going to earth school when you arrive with parents who are completely opposite of a child who is very cosmic because they need to see these decisions. Uh, they need to understand the complications that come along with them. It is not to suffer. This is what we want to clear up the understanding of because some may anticipate that it is karmic. And while we do acknowledge that to come to the earth regardless of the form that you are requires some karmic energy, karma is not to suffer. It is to bring wisdom into the spirit that is a physical human body and take it on a journey of transitioning the earth. So while we see the current circumstances and landscape as very frightening for these children, what we know is they are also very cosmically and um, um, vibrationally resound. In some cases, this can make them more sensitive to toxins and um, um, frequencies on the earth. But it also um, allows them to have a, a different resonance than many humans are holding. Uh, and because of this, they may be guided to more energetic processes and abilities to transmute these energies that, that are aware uh, that many are than many are aware of today. Um, we want to give you an example of what we speak of, and it, it is a very difficult one uh, to rectify because, it is not scientific. It is not something that is often seen. Cosmic children, uh, hybrid children who come to the earth have a great deal of etheric activity that is going on. And they do not separate it from their experience on earth. They see it as very blended. And there may be times when they're starkly aware that their cosmic families are present. They are taken on ships. They are supported by those that are clearing their fields, helping them to understand how to do it themselves in very simplistic ways. And there's a great deal of telepathic exchange that goes on with these children as well. This in and of itself is a part of the process um, of being uh, a hybrid child, but also gives us the faith and courage to know that lower vibrational frequencies will ultimately not be sustainable within their bodies for long periods of time. Either they will be led to detoxify them or the detoxification will take place in the astral. It does not mean that we are um, uh, in allowance of what is going on in the realm of decision uh, or we support that. In, in any sense of the word. We are just taking you into um, a more expansive viewpoint of, of how we see these contracts in the astral and bringing your attention to them in ways you may not have considered. Sometimes I wake up and become filled with terror. There, uh, There's a first a sense of movement as if moving through water and then I come to waking consciousness and suddenly feel intense fear, fright, and dread feel it in my chest, I don't understand why or how to stop it. Is this something you can address? We are Divine Mother. 
so many empathic souls today are becoming so unified with the collective that they are taking these energies upon themselves, especially those that are very diligent in their practice, who are finding themselves often in the astral, because the body has a difficult time moving between realms. And there certainly are two very distinct vibrational and dimensional fields that are operating simultaneous on earth. And this is not to say that what you are experiencing is wrong, but we do believe that those who experience this are here to counteract it in some very collective and powerful way. You see, the frequencies that create empathy in the body are the same ones that a healer may use to transmute it. It is somewhat like a telepathic process that we find ourselves in. We may, for a great deal of time, be traveling the astral and find ourselves in different dimensions and come back to Earth and in a moment's notice feel the shock of coherent energies in our heart gathering up messages from multiple humans that we were not in touch with for a great deal of time. But in these moments, if we can be diligent to send the opposite frequency of love out to the collective, we will not only become balanced within ourselves, we will find great purpose. This is often not seen as something that is very effective, but these signals are somewhat like the technology of the human spirit telling you that you have a great responsibility. And it is not by your fault that you are feeling this, but through your will that you are meant to transition it. And if you can stay within the alignment of your healer self, um, going back to the initial message from Mary Magdalene and many others, uh, the master that you are that has come to earth, you will find no fear. Those of us who were here during the time period most known as Christ were taught this very practice because we were working much in the astral to prepare for the ceremonies that would take place. Uh, we would find ourselves going beneath the earth and deep into Sophia to commune with her. We were traveling to connect with our star sisters very often. We were focused diligently on meditation, but we would come back into our bodies and our beautiful and precious souls would feel the organic fear of what we were yet to face. It was in these moments that we were taught to channel the greatest love, to channel it first within our bodies and then to extend it through our auras onto the surface of the earth for every other being to receive. This is what brought us the confidence and the faith and the trust of a master. But it also, in seeing after our transition, added a very beautiful quality to the template we left behind. It was not only for the purpose of the resurrection and the rebirth of many, but to hold constant the history and the, the, the uh, teachings of divine feminine, uh, which are not only physical, they are very vibrational as well. I feel a telepathic dialogue from implants from 12 star beings. Can you help me understand if their purpose is aligned with love and light? We are the Pleiadians, and we are very pleased to answer this question. First, it is not our intention to create fear. However, there are so many different forms of implants that exist throughout the cosmos. And we see many humans that are complicated by them today. But what you are speaking of um, is something that we see as very organic and pure. Contracts and assignments with intergalactics exist in many planes of reality. And it is often the dimension you stay in the most that has the influence on the technology or the implant itself. Let us explain. You may be implanted with something that 
is not to the highest and best interest of yourself or others. And it may be sending frequencies and messages into the mind that are directing you outside of your organic truth. But the only ability that you have in these moments is to resonate above where that technology is focusing you. There are many who remove these technologies and we have a great deal of respect for them. But unfortunately, we see that it is up to the authority of every being to choose their reality to ensure that what is operating within them is sovereign, true, and good. So we want to confirm that cosmic beings that you have connections with in the astral or otherwise are always mutually beneficial. What that means is messages that are brought in, if they are in a technology such as this, will not only improve your path and reality, uplifting you in some way, but have purpose and meaning on the whole of the earth. These two things must go hand in hand for a soul to know that what they are operating with is pure. So if there is some level of destruction in your life and you are receiving messages from cosmic beings, at some point you must rectify the imbalances between these two things. And this will ensure not only that a negative technology becomes dismantled, but a positive one becomes amplified. And typically what we see in these more positive technologies are not those that ever control a soul's outcome. They are imbued uh, with choice, with a level of, of physical and spiritual freedom and sovereignty. It may bring a soul to great um, uh, intuition and curiosity about sharing something that they have never shared before. Uh, it may enlighten them and bring wisdom. But a cosmic being will never say, through a technology or otherwise, that this is something you must do. And this is the distinguishing quality, we believe, that can help you, all of you, to discern whether you are receiving something that is valuable and supportive or not. And we want to pause here and take a moment because we do, do believe it's very important to share an energetic practice now. As many of you are contemplating your own messages and technologies and the validity of those. So all of you who are here and those of you who are beyond, we simply ask that you find comfort, however best that is for you. Uh, utilizing the chair that you are in as your transitional guide to, to move you through the astral with the breath, bringing you into a state of pure coherence and alignment outside of this room, outside of this body. Begin breathing with us, slowly and gently, as we invite in the teachers, masters, beings, angels that are best supportive of this endeavor now. Those that surround you are here only for you. You may have some inkling of their arrival, some familiar feeling that they are here, or direct acknowledgement of their presence. They place their hands upon your shoulders, upon your heart, upon the top of your head. And as you are breathing with them, they are uplifting you, taking you out of body, out of chair, out of room, and into space. As you begin to float and drift, letting go of any resistance, letting go of any thought, you find yourself resting lovingly in the arms of trusted guides who are scanning you now, who have the ability to see within your auric field, to see within your body. And they are taking account of everything that exists there, natural and unnatural, organic and inorganic. Whatever they see, whatever they know, does not need reference. It does not need intellect. 
It is taken care of through them. It is either uplifted or transitioned. It is removed or it is activated. It is disintegrated and it is purged. Everything within you now becomes reprioritized and your focus only on fulfillment. Walking a path of joy helps to sustain your energy field in the purest and most balanced way. If you are always doing this, there is no reason to fear. Anything that is implanted within you must operate through your consciousness. So if that consciousness is expanded, if it is high vibrational, if it is focused on the world and your life in a very beneficial way, it is either inoperable or now becoming supportive. Breathe for a moment. Sink a bit deeper into this relaxation that we have helped you to arrive in. As we channel energy through you to clear any final remnants, thought forms, emotions, unnatural waves and frequencies that have gone along with these. Amplifying the ones that are pure and good and beneficial to be claimed later when we arrive back in body. I'm going to take one final deep cleansing breath. Finding yourself back in the chair, back in body, bringing your attention to your feet, your ankles, grounding yourself deep into Gaia Sophia's crystalline core and receiving her love to heal, seal, and complete this process. And we are pleased to move on when you are ready. <laughs> when Christians speak in tongues, is that the same thing as speaking light language? What exactly is the difference? Yes. Uh, we are the, the Arcturians. And through time, we have seen the ceremonies that take place in various civilizations and religious practices merge with cosmic entities, languages, and sounds. However, we must explain that these are not always benevolent, for it is the intention through which those languages arrive that is the most important consideration. If we are focused on a savior that exists outside of us, and we are channeling the energy of languages of light that exist in that same belief, they may not be the most high and beneficial for our soul or for our physical bodies. But if we are acknowledging the creator within, if we are aligned with source and the purity of light, the languages that we may receive can blend and not only support physical healing, but the extension of that healing onto others, as well as the mm, shifts in our bodies that are elemental to bring more. When we are in a state of trance that is often required for these encounters, there are many different ways to go about it. We always advise stating a very solid intention that exists in the highest and purest good of all, uh, such that the energies that come through are matching. Can you give a comparison between the old grid and the new grid? We're the Council of Light. And we want to simplify this answer um, because the grids can be a very complex uh, understanding. Uh, they are very quantum and mathematical. What we see is the channels of energy that make up the old grid are a simplistic form and foundation of exchange that maintain what you know of the third dimension. But 
the big difference between that and the new grid is that it was encapsulated within itself. For example, as we have mentioned in the sacred geometric translation, energies are meant to coincide and everything is connected. The earth grids are meant to connect to universal grids so that universal knowledge and Akashic energy is exchanged, which is beneficial to humans going through any karmic circumstance of the past. But the reason the old grid was encapsulated has to do with a great deal of creation taking place in very discordant ways. As the council, this is something we bring to your attention because it is a part of our assignment and we are reflective of all beings and all races throughout the universe. There is an agreement to ensure that if destructive energies are taking place in one location, they are not directly shared with another to implicate their reality. And one of the most destructive activities that we see going on on the earth exists in the frequency of war. Uh, throughout time, humans have been perpetuating this frequency of war and violence, which was the reason for the encapsulation of the old grid. So essentially, what we believe happened was the third dimension was a vicious cycle and loop of repeating karma, keeping societal um, structures uh, very stagnant and not advancing in the way that they could. This lends itself also nicely to the question about science and quantum physics. Had the old grid worked well for you, you may have seen the merging that you so desire today. The new grid is being fed by creations that exist outside of the old one. Every human soul is affecting this grid by creating something that has not been seen before or is not the norm. We'll give you an example. In the third dimension, uh, there is a way of schooling. And that way of schooling was manifested by humanity and perhaps implicated by others. There were various translations and teachings that remained very stagnant for a great deal of time. And there are many who came to realize that this was not progressing in the direction of their desires. So alternative schools were born or ways of schooling children became an option. And those do not exist in the old grid because they are not repeating the same energetic patterns of what is there now. And this is truly, um, we'll say an example of how universal law works. Grid systems are meant to up-level, reorganize, and change as a planet or a race ascends. But the big difference you are seeing now is that it is very hard to change what exists in the third dimension. In fact, this is the reason that much of what exists there is still not serving you. Because what it has been based in is false. It, again, you have been taught that there is a savior, a creator, an authority that exists outside of you. And through that belief, you have put things in place that are very resistant and stagnant. And they are a choice. Humans may choose them if they so desire. But ultimately, what we think is going to happen is there will be more and more discontent in the, that choosing. Because humans are designed to expand. They are designed to change. They're designed to grow. So if something is not moving at the same rate and speed as the race that created it, it will become non-existent. But unfortunately, the belief systems of many are still reinforcing these things. So we can say that the difference between the grid systems has its foothold and anchor in human belief. And there are some who are believing different than others and are creating a reality that reflects those beliefs. My nine-year-old son recently confessed to me that he sees energy in people and shapes. 
He feels a lot. What are the best ways to support and develop his gifts, providing he doesn't feel uncomfortable sharing this with his peers? We are Mary Magdalene. It is the parent's role first to validate that which a child experience, experiences. This is the most important step, we believe. It is not only the foundation of trust that a soul that is the child will find within themselves, but it provides somewhat of a stable foundation to grow the gift and ability that is being discovered. Because if we do not validate and trust what a child sees, they will not validate and trust it themselves. And in doing so, may become misled into energies and experiences that can be fearful. In the validation, there is also, um, we'll say, an opportunity for a parent to guide a child to validate their own experiences without them having to teach. We see so many who come to the planet with these advanced gifts, stepping into them very quickly and easily, but they are so unique and so different from how parents and teachers perceive energy that there may not be an ability to actually teach them something that they already know. So in other words, we think the most important path is to set up a framework where a child is free to explore and become their own teacher. But the guidance that is most important in these situations um, relies upon what many of us have come to teach in so many other areas. When we feel validated, safe, comfortable, and heard, in human connection, we will receive the resource that is needed to amplify that in our world and the world of others. And there are so many who come to the planet these days whose role is this. Uh, they are here to ambassador young children, to give them a voice, uh, to help them find their purpose, and to let them lead the way to the new earth. But often it is difficult to find these resources and if a parent takes the responsibility upon themselves to teach a child, they may never cross paths with the material or the beings that best suit them. So we encourage you to become as supportive and creative as possible without having to place too many of your interpretations and beliefs upon a child, but to allow them the space and the creativity to explore it themselves. Now, we know it is difficult in the world today to be accepted for these things, um, but we see so many of these children being dropped into areas where it is inevitable the consciousness does, ma does not match the experiences they are having. Uh, and again, this is not to suffer, but it is because their energy is so potent and so expansive that they are in a region to awaken others simply through their exploration of what they are connecting to, they are sending a wave, a signal in the geographic region around them that is creating change. But it is to the discretion of a parent to um, especially allow a child to direct their comfort in sharing these encounters. Uh, and this is why. We never know the contracts that a child may have with another, with a friend, with a family member, with a neighbor. They may be here to expose them to something that they have never heard before. They may be here to validate some experiences they are having that they have never shared before. And as a parent, it is fearful to us because we see the potential consequences of how that may play out. But these children are here to create very expansive legacies. They are here to be in such a state of alignment and courage that there is nothing that holds them back. So early on in life, there may be some lessons that need to be learned. There may be some paths that need to be traversed that are uncomfortable and are difficult 
but you could have never been chosen as their mother if you did not have the wisdom and ability to support them through this. Uh, keep in mind that there is nothing you must do. Uh, all that you are is what brought this child into being. This is what called this child into your life. There is something within you that knows exactly how to respond to every present moment that you will go to or go through together. So have that trust and faith in yourself. Validate your own intuition and how to allow this blossoming to take place. Could the guides please compare and contrast free will and sovereignty? We are the Pleiadians. We see truly no difference between the two. In fact, on Earth, they are being used interchangeably. The problem is this. Free will has been used on the Earth in concert with a great deal of governmental process. So in our realm, free will and sovereignty is simply the nature of every soul and being to create to their likeness. But on the earth, free will, the term, has been relegated to something that is allowed by others. We see sovereignty, the opposite of this, in human terms, being utilized as more of a, a conscious interpretation of what a unified collective that is able to exist in free will uh, is. But we want to use this term free will uh, in a way you may not have experienced before. If you, it is broken down into its separate components, it is shared in a way that um, helps you become closer connected to it. Your will is the will of others. We know it is not seen this way, but there is truly no division between you and any other human. You are all fractals making up part of a collective hologram. And your will, if it is followed in the purest intent, free of any implication of trauma or any implication of ego, is going to benefit the soul of another. So your will must be free from within you and be created in the world to serve. Ultimately, we see this has been the opposite process. You have a will, but it is within a certain level of existing as a free soul that you are able to use that will, which was never intended by your ancestors, by your cosmic families, by your own oversouls, and by your own higher selves. If you are imparting your will through some distorted mm, hierarchical uh, process, it is not free. And in that way, does not serve. We think you are moving into a period where all of this will take care of itself, but you must also attend to yourselves because everything that exists within you is a reflection of something else in the world. We mentioned trauma and ego. These are two very important factors that we believe are elemental to the shift in consciousness ahead. And ultimately what we see playing out in resistance of sovereignty. Because if you follow your will and allow yourself to move beyond trauma, and to not exist within the false ego, you will find your life in complete alignment with your desire, which is sovereignty, and supporting everything else that needs to also be free. We have so many mm, high hopes for where humanity is headed, but we also have a few concerns, and we think this is a, an occasion to bring those to your attention. There is a movement today on the earth, a movement of many, to take this term, free will, and imprint it with the idea that it is selfish. That if you want to move energy to your will freely, 
that you are not considering other humans. And if this continues on, you will find more stagnancy and more closed doors and more resistance and inability to actually do what it is you intended. But further, the distortions that are playing out at the level of the collective have their foothold in legality, something that we have also watched degrade on your planet over many years. Humans are attempting to use the process of legality um, to govern and allow free will. But free will is something that is already existent. It is within you and it is on the earth to reclaim. These are false paths, we believe, to attempting to receive something that is already your birthright to claim. So be wary of these two areas uh, that we see very potent and intensified as of late because they are teaching younger generations perhaps the wrong path to take and the wrong definition of sovereignty. Question for Mary Magdalene. I've been told I'm of the lineage of the Sisterhood of the Rose. What is the purpose for us at this time? We are very pleased to address you, as there are many speaking through this channel, as Mary Magdalene also is present. The Sisterhood of the Rose is a very ancient lineage of divine feminine masters who span multiple timelines and generations. We have existed on multiple star systems, and we come back now to create a template of love that is the foundation of the new earth. But it is also our intent to help humanity rebirth parts of the earth collective. We're not speaking of humans here. We're speaking of collective consciousness, areas where the masculine, which is a very beneficial frequency to uh, access, has become out of balance and has focused humans in very physical, mental, and unnatural ways. We also are here as agents of transition. We are working directly with Sophia, the consciousness of Earth, which is also a divine feminine presence, and helping that presence and frequency to flow through the meridians of Gaia to the surface. You see, all of you who carry this lineage are here with <clears throat> very unique and diversified talents and gifts uh, are being directed uh, in very different ways. Some of you are bringing the Akashic knowledge of ancient history to earth and helping to explain it. Others are sending transmissions of divine feminine energy through their field and into the entire collective. Some are here repairing grids and releasing the karmic overlay of past incarnations that have yet to resolve. It is a very massive, um, we'll say, and intensive assignment, and there are many who are uh, assuming these positions. There is a commonality, though, uh, in answer to your question. The ceremonies that those who are in the Sisterhood of the Rose attended um, are coming back to the earth in mass. And this is important because as an enlightened civilization, you may find that spirituality is going to lead the way into new physical life. And it is the feminine in many star systems that allowed this to happen. Uh, the feminine energy was not only a technologically advanced and revered energy, uh, it was also um, manifested in councils and physical beings that were not rulers as you know them today, but leading in love. So we might say that those of you who are here are preparing the earth to be led in love so that it may be um, in, in our minds and hearts a reflection of the most enlightened civilizations. Yeah, is there any danger in completely avoiding mainstream news and media and just um, focusing on other things? Oh, we're the Pleiadians. Uh, 
we highly advise that this would be appropriate for humanity at this time. And, and we want to explain why, because it, um, it may not be the answer you expect. While there is um, a, a media outlet, we would say, that, that so, does hold some truth on the planet today that has not yet come to full fruition, the old grid is supporting most of them. Even what you see in the more conscious and alternative media outlets has some foothold, we believe, to the frequency of fear. And what humans must understand is that the man-made frequencies and intentions embedded within messages that come through these outlets are far more destructive than what is heard by the naked ear. In other words, similar to the question um, about charging and programming a crystal, there is a consciousness that exists upon Earth that is utilizing mass media as a tool of destruction to bring humans into a state of very dense vibration and to keep them cycling in a history that is not moving forward. So we might say that paying attention to these outlets um, is not only destructive, um, it can cause a frequency shift that many would not anticipate nor see. It is somewhat like the transmission of a communication tower, uh, cellular energy or Wi-Fi. It helps us to connect to others and we may rely upon it, but we do not see the effects that it has beneath the surface of the skin. If we are using certain combinations of words and certain patterns, and we are using images and pictures that support them, we are creating a technology that is no different than something that we hold in our hands or we are utilizing in our homes. So when we say a new modality or a new outlet is coming to the surface, we want to be very clear on what it is. The intuitive force within you always knows the best things to pay attention to at the right times. For it is important on the surface of the earth to have some understanding of what's going on in different geographic regions and especially what may impact your world. But if it is something that is sovereign and true and not implicated by this reptilian conscious, it's going to match our integrity. So if we are always focused in integrity and if we are always following our intuition, we may find that we logically connect with those outlets that have the perfect message to share. And in the future, this is going to come more as intuitive announcements. We realize you see this now. There are many humans that are sharing channeled transmissions, astrological interpretations, and that of the like. We believe these things will become more than norm for humanity to interpret where the world is going and connect it to what is happening so that it may be of service. <laughs> On so many levels I'm connecting like I could when I was a child and it's amazing. I'm also experiencing fibromyalgia flares like never before. I feel like this is connected. Could the guides please share any insights on this matter as I feel like we're all experiencing extremes? We're going to bring in the mantis for a minute and I welcome them. We are ambassadors of human bodies and the microbiological components of consciousness that make them up. We speak to them on a regular basis, and it is our intention to create more coherence and vibratory alignment between them. And we want to answer this question because the diagnosis that you have brought up to us is something that varies between many humans, but we do think it is an anomaly of energy. Ultimately, what is taking place on the earth is that human bodies are upgrading their energetic components. And there is more light that is available for human bodies to access. But often the physical parts of you um, have been so eroded through time 
that the channels within are not balancing this energy. Uh, again, we want to bring in sacred geometry as an example. If your body is a perfect sacred geometry, all channels of energy are perfectly arranging light to keep you not only vibrant and healthy, but pain-free and um, uh, focusing your attention on what you must do, not tending to your body. Unfortunately, what we see as the most destructive for humanity today is that these channels have either been disturbed by some form of metallic or some toxin, or they have been restricted through our own thought. So fibromyalgia or pain or any type of disease is actually the body's way of showing us that energy is blocked. And in these experiences, what we are going for to find balance and comfort is not always a physical approach. We are supporting our bodies through life force. And the breath is always a vehicle of transmutation and alignment. If we are able to bring as much life force into the body as possible, it knows how to realign itself and open these channels to heal any disease that goes beyond the scope of the human mind or is not able to be addressed. In fact, we think your microbiolo microbiolo <laughs> microbiology depends on this because you have become so disconnected from earth that the channels in, in your body uh, are also reflecting this. Yes, there are many shifts. There are very intensified plasmic energies and solar frequencies coming to the planet. And we do acknowledge that there may be periods of time that the body goes through adjustment where there is a slight divergence or pain or a feeling of exhaustion. But if it is chronic, if it is going on for a long period of time, this is how you will know that your microbiotic collectives are not channeling energy efficiently. There are many ways to go about this outside of the breath. We suggest always going straight to earth and bringing in the most pure and resonant forms of light possible. As you do this, you will find that your body is going to respond further by perhaps intensifying the pain or the purging. And if you are able to go through this very willingly and patiently, the result will be fantastic. Because there is a die-off period, we believe. These microbiotics have gone out of sync. Some of them are meant to be there and others are not. Some are in very high counts and others are very weak counts. And what light does in any form, whether it is breath or whether it is food, is helps to bring that balance back organically, which is different for every single soul. We see so many of you following, following specific diets and protocols for health. And we want to go back to the previous question about news and media. If you are following your into it, you will be guided to the exact approach that your microbiology is calling from you, as opposed to using the mind as a tool to find it. This is where we see many humans going wrong. So the most supportive um, activities are not only breath and light, but water, uh, much, um, in, uh, we'll say, increased amounts um, of pure water during this time. Uh, the reason being, you are running energy on water and you are becoming lighter beings by the moment. So if you are to ingest this water, you will find that the body will do far, fare far better uh, than what it has in the past. And also, uh, we cannot deny um, or ignore the importance of vagal tone. We always bring this into these sessions because the most important channel of energy is the one that exists there. It connects to every single organ, tissue, and structure of the body. And if you are actively um, um, increasing this tone, through multiple forms of practice, uh, you will find that you will also be in um, um, far more comfort through these intensified shifts and in energies uh, than you would otherwise. Uh, one more message we will, we will relay. Um, sacred geometric balance in the body stems from this place. It is a central channel that runs right along the back of the spine. 
And it runs in concert with and intertwined with the vagal nerve, which is a sonic vibration or a harmonic tone. When that is amplified, uh, when it is practiced, you will find your body vibrating into perfect alignment with very little effort. And those who practice this often will stay resilient and even uh, may anti-age as you walk through the coming years. <laughs> If I want to enhance my telepathic abilities, is there anything you can recommend as a practice to do so? Yes. We are the Phoenicians, and we are very pleased to enter this transmission. Telepathy is already present within all of you. So it is not something that must be efforted at so much as uncovered. And there are many individualized paths to understand your telepathic abilities. The most chronic process that we see that gets in the way of telepathy is an overactive mind. Now we know this is something that is difficult to hear because so many of you are having a challenging time with the mind cycling into patterns of what may occur in the future and what is happening now. And it is not this that we speak of that is most detrimental. But often what goes on beyond your subconscious understanding that is the most difficult. For example, the mind is always active and it is important to have a mind because it is useful to you in all of your physical activities. But the mind also has a higher construct that connects with intuition. We see it as a part of the entire complex that merges with your pineal gland, for example. And the pineal gland is not just for seeing, it is also for time traveling and telepathy. But sometimes what the mind is saying negates the connection that you truly need. For example, if the mind is constantly spiraling in a physical focus, is going to create a vibrational plane or field around you through which telepathy becomes difficult. So if you can practice something that brings you more presence and mindfulness in your day, the first step is this. You will hear the thoughts we are speaking of, the ones that contradict the ability to receive astrally. These may be doubts, they may be beliefs, they may be focused inward on the self. Any judgment or self-criticism is a contradiction to connecting telepathically. Because what we are striving for is to be in the highest and best connection with no restriction of self or the other. That may be with another human self. Uh, it may be with a cosmic being or an intergalactic collective. But the purity of our vibration is always the foundation upon which these gifts arrive. The second step when these thoughts are heard or seen is to not judge yourself for them, to release them from your field by counteracting them with something else. These may be affirmations, prayers, intentions that you create in complete contradiction to anything that degrades your vibration. Practice this for some time. And what we believe may happen is this, your sensory will start to become more sensory. When the mind takes a back seat and only does what it is meant to do and rewires itself through your intention and direction, you will begin to feel, see, hear things that have never been in your field before. And this is the third and most important step, validation. In these moments, even the slightest validation of some shift in our frequency, some shift in our sensory will build that muscle. And this is what we want. If we can go about um, uncovering our gifts naturally as opposed to effort it, efforting at them so diligently or, vil or um, uh, religiously, uh, we will find more ease uh, and grace and, and purpose as they arrive. 
Could you conclude the session, please? Yes. Uh, we are the Magdalenas. It has been our distinct honor always to be with you as a collective that matches our own hearts. We see so much beauty and so much potential and so much purpose that we are blinded by the light. We only hold the highest hope for you at times when you are feeling it is absent. And we share it with you energetically through the breath. Remember us always and breathe often so that you may receive it. Many blessings. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and co-creating that experience with me. Uh, if you're out there, Ethan and Barbara are coming up next. So stick around. We'll take a 15-minute break here too. And then they'll be back with an awesome energy transfer. Right.